Hey guys, Basil and Will from Grayson Hobby, and today, believe it or not, we are going to show you how to disassemble your wizard and solder it up for a four cell. I'm going to show you guys how to wire up the buzzer, the VBAT, and also finally, and I think it's very important, is running the VTX to a 12 volt source if you're running a 4 cell LiPo. So, so alright, so here it is, how to wire the VBAT and the buzzer and set it up for 4 cell. 4 cell on the wizard. Basically, you have along here your battery input, your battery wires are soldered here, your speed controls are soldered here, 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 and here. Your camera, believe it or not, is soldered to the VTX because it's going to the front, and your camera, or your VTX is soldered to the camera pads going to the rear for some reason. Um, the other thing you got here is a plus and minus here, and you got a five volt and 12 volt pad. Um, a lot of times everybody hears me refer, and if you got a wizard from us and you get the little sticker saying, hey, solder the VTX to the 12 volt pad if you're running four cell, what I'm referring to is the 12 volt pad here. Um, from the factory, the VTX is wired power over here in the front, that's battery voltage. Um, unfortunately, battery voltage that can spike when you first plug in, hot battery, stuff like that. Um, I see more likely to blow out the VTX on four cell. That's why we don't recommend the four cell with the stock VTX, um, unless you move the power to a 12 volt regular pad. Another thing you'll find, uh, the VTX, I, I guess it's filtered with a couple capacitors here on the 12 volt pad. If you get ripple noise, like if you're getting noise in your video when you're punching the throttle on four cell, uh, you might get more horizontal noise in your video. Moving the 12 volt pad usually gets rid of that too. So it's actually somewhat of a filtered 12 volt pad. Um, so it takes out some of that noise if you're getting video noise. Um, if you're running three cell, you don't wanna move to the 12 volt pad because when your voltage on your battery dips below 12 volts, the, the BEC built into here can't provide 12 volts anymore, and then your video could actually cut out, could go black screen, stuff like that, or you'll lose power on your VTX. Um, in theory, it should work down to seven volts, but a lot of times you end up having issues, so it's not recommended unless you're only doing four cell. Um, so this is for guys, you're, you're, you're done with three cell, you're stepping up to four cell, because uh, that's what everybody's telling you to do, and you want to do four cell, this is how we're making the wizard ready for four cell. So. All right, basically, you're gonna remove the, the top plate screws, the six top plate screws. You're gonna remove the side plates. The top plate itself, we're gonna take off. We're gonna carefully, un you don't tug on the wires, but pull it out, just, just pushes out. All right, so we got that out. So you gotta be careful. You don't wanna pull the wires from the PDB, otherwise you'll have a fire when you plug in the battery. The VTX, you see it there? We're gonna unplug the VTX. So at the receiver. Um, since we're going to be soldering on this, I'm going to unplug the receiver from the flight controller. Remember, when you do plug in the receiver, you got to be very careful on these because these are very tiny pins. If you plug it in sideways, you can bend a pin and damage your flight controller. Receiver and VTX, we still got over here. I'm just going to put that aside for now. And then the camera, get that out of the way. This is the wizard broken down pretty far. You're going to take a 5.5 millimeter uh, socket. And now we're gonna carefully lift up the flight controller. Now guys, we gotta be very careful because all these wires are on the bottom side. Uh, they're all soldered. If you break the connections, you're gonna have to resolder them. Wow, well, it looks a mess. But, yeah, there's a mess under here, guys. Uh, Ishin, I don't know how you even got all that under there at <laughs> once, but uh, we're gonna add more wires, guys. So Yay. first thing we're gonna do is add the VBAT wire, and then we'll do the buzzer afterwards. Um, the VBAT wire is gonna go this pad here and this pad here um, towards is going towards the front of the quad. So you'll see on the bottom side it says VBAT. So you can either solder it through it, uh, top or bottom. And, all right, so starting out here, the first thing we're gonna do, because everybody's been asking, uh, we're gonna do the VBAT and buzzer solder. This is something you could do whether you do three cell or four cell. Um, the VBAT sensor is being activated on the flight controller to get power reading off the PDB, which is from the battery source. Uh, this will give you the ability to sense the voltage on the flight controller, and then when you're wiring up the buzzer, when your battery gets low and stuff like that, then now your buzz will start beeping saying, hey, low battery. Essentially the same thing we were doing with the little plug-in adapter, but now you're not having to run an external uh, LiPo checker cell, cell alarm. Uh, this is 28 gauge wire here, um, black and red. You can do whatever colors you want, but obviously I'd get two different colors, so you can <laughs> wire it up backwards. Uh, I've seen that um, I've before. I've seen that before as well. But we just need two wires. 
Um, where I'm going to solder from, the flight controller is going to sit back in this orientation. I'm actually going to go from the front and around and back over to here so we actually have, but I'm going to do a little bit longer wire so it gives me room because you see I can, I can articulate a little bit here. Um, so I'm going to give it about an inch longer than I need, that way I can work on the PDB if I ever have to in the future. So what we're going to do is cut a wire, uh, maybe a little shy of two inches kind of thing. So we got our wire there. And then the other thing we're gonna need is a buzzer. Uh, just strip the ends a little bit so it can fit on the solder pad. And then we're gonna tin them, um, put a little flux on them, tin them, and then we're gonna get the flight controller and PDB ready to solder. So. All right, so here's what we got. I'm gonna piggyback, again, showing this PDB. Your battery voltage right here and right here is this wire and this wire. Um, because most guys are gonna have basic soldering irons, 30 watts, stuff like that, um, soldering to the larger wires on the battery port, which would be good, um, you run the risk of desoldering the battery or getting a cold solder joint on your battery pads. So we're gonna actually use the smaller pads, that way we're less likely to have a cold solder joint when we're done. Um, and you're not running the risk of having a connector, your main battery connector come loose while you're flying. So basically what we're gonna do, this is the PDB, we're gonna piggyback off this positive and negative here that's running to the VTX for our power, for our VBAT power. Um, so this pad, this pad here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn this this way. This is the front of the quad, and then I'm gonna solder. So this is the front of the quad? This is the front of the quad now. I just, okay. battery leads in the back. This is the front. So we're gonna take this there, and this is going towards the camera, remember that. Um, then we're gonna solder it. If I can get my hands in there. There we go. Okay, so you'll see here you got two nice shiny silver. Um, that means you don't have a cold solder joint. You got a nice shiny pad. It's for everybody. This is if you're running uh, three cell or four cell, this is the way to add VBAT sensing to your flight controller. Okay. This is the fun part. Running these wires, we're gonna get the signal wires back out and we gotta get all, all this wire tucked back under their flight control. This is a pain. All right, so when you guys are running this, make sure you get the yellow leads running outside and then down the middle usually helps. And it's gonna take a little bit of work to get these things because there's just so much wiring going on under here. So what I'm doing is I'm just holding it. I'm not forcing anything down, but I'm looking here and pretty much we're able to get the flight controller down. Yep, okay, so I have no issues getting the flight controller down. Do issues of pinching wires, right? Yeah, you don't want to pinch any wires. At this point, right. if you're if you're forcing this board down really hard to get it down, um, a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit there, it's not going to be too bad. But you don't want this board flexing and having it, you know, breaking a solder joint or something like that. But basically, we're going to put the board back down. Really, nothing should be in the way since our wires went straight out. Yeah, we're, I mean, everything is the way it was um, before we ran all the wires back where it was. And again, this is a huge mess. I'm just going to hold it down with two for now. So the board is down, all the wires are back where they were. The signal wires, you'll see the white wire here is running to the outside and then down, outside and then down, outside and down on all of them. So this is that channel where it's cut out on the frame. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put just a little bit of flux here. Nothing, you don't need a lot or anything like that. It's just something to help the solder flow. It just makes the things a little easier. So now we're gonna tin that, right? Yep. That is so tiny down there. Now we're gonna run. Now I'm guessing we just run the wires. Yep. It's always best to clean the tip on these things so you don't want burned up solder on it. There. And there. This is the VBAT. That that's all there is to the VBAT. Um, so we got that there. Now you can always run shorter wires, guys. If you want to run it shorter, by all means, you can run it through the holes and solder. Um, biggest thing is remember, you got the profile height. You got so much stuff going on underneath there. You really kind of want to lay everything as flat as you can so you can stack it better. The flight controller now can see whatever power is going into the battery, from the battery to the, uh, the PDB, so it can see it there. But it's not really doing anything until we hook up the buzzer. So the next right. step is hooking up okay. the buzzer. I have a little mini buzzer here. These are the little Eachin mini buzzers. And it actually comes with wire, short strip of wire. Actually look at the top of the buzzer. There's a plus and nothing. So you wanna run the wet red wire to the positive pin, the one labeled plus. And that essentially is gonna wire up here. Now with this micro buzzer, 
honestly, you can wire it up to where it's you just bend the pins and solder it on. The only downside, guys, if you're if you're still smashing this thing around um, and crashing a lot the solder pad could come loose and the buzzer could break off. Um, in this particular case, you could run extra wire and just zip tie it you know, down somewhere um, or hot glue the buzzer down. You can hot glue the buzzer to the frame. I think I'm just gonna bend the wire and solder it on because personally, I think uh, just soldering the buzzer there is gonna get the job done for okay. me. So, so now what are you doing? I'm bending the wire. Okay. So what you'll see is I basically took the pins and I bent them to where they'll fit here. Now guys, remember if you are running iBus or Spectrum or anything like that, that you're running the rear UART port, you gotta keep in mind you got this plug going in here, so you don't want the buzzer over too far, you need room for that. So in this case, you know, you're not doing this on the stock configuration wizards, but if you are running iBus or SBus or um, serial connection on it with a Spectrum receiver, you do need to keep in mind that. So worst case scenario, you might have to clip uh, clip the little tab off on the side to plug it in, but you don't want it to where you bend the pins putting it in. All right, so basically all I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna get a little flux. On the buzzer pads, I'm gonna get a little, eh, get the buzzer there. So it's a through hole, right? In this case, we are making a through hole solder joint, yeah. Oh, so that should be really, really secure. Yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solder one, I'm gonna flow the solder on from one side. But before I do both of them, I'm gonna get it to where I can line it up better and just I want to make sure this buzzer is kind of pushed up against the board so it's not flopping around and mm -hmm. vibrating and causing any extra noise to the flight controller for any reason. So I got it butted up nice and tight up against the flight controller here. It should keep it possibly from breaking off as well in a crash. So, and now we're just going to flow the solder there. And actually I'm going to go back since I tacked the other one and flow the solder there. So now we got our VBAT wired up and our buzzer wired up. Um, and so you need the VBAT to get the buzzer working. It's a two-part system almost, right? Pretty much, yeah. You can't. I mean, you could put the buzzer on and set it to a switch for like lost plane, uh, lost plane finder stuff like that, um, and just have it for finding your quad when you go down. But we saw the option. Right? But since you're already soldering, you might as well solder the VBAT on. So now we have both options, right? Yes. Alarm and a low voltage. Yeah, we have low voltage alarm for battery, and then we we can f uh, find it in the woods or something like that. This is three cell, and now you just finish. Remember, put all your the little nuts back on here. But wait, there's more. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna pull the, this off and I'm gonna show you guys what I've been talking about. You see it on your boxes, you see it. I mention it everywhere I possibly can. If I post anywhere, <laughs> it's talking about the VTX and running for cell. Guys will argue all day long which, which way to do it. This is the way I recommend it. Um, so do Re what you want to do. Recommend, it's not, it doesn't mean this is the only way it works. Yeah, it's not the only way it works. In, you can plug a four cell in, but you're, there is possibilities. I got several customers that will vouch for me on that one that you'll blow the VTX out on four cell when you plug in the battery. It's not every time, but it can happen. We're gonna take the flight controller back off and remember where I soldered the VBAT? There's those two wires here, and if you trace the VTX back, there's two wires for the VTX. The black and red wires, right? The black and red. Not We're not touching the yellow, we're just touching the black and red. This is the power. That's all the way to the front. We're gonna actually pull those off and move them to a different part of the board. Well, we're not pulling them off, we're desoldering, right? Yes, desoldering, sorry. Well, it doesn't have a connector. If Basil goes missing, it's because he corrected me too many times. I didn't correct. I just want to make sure. Okay. I never did this before. So to the front here, the the VTX typically runs from this pad to this pad in the front. These two pads to the back. So this black red wire, black and red wire, is running all the way to the front to these two pads here. We're gonna move them to these 12 volt pads here. Um, specifically, reason is all these pads right here are already being used for other stuff. They're they're using these L, uh, pads right here for the uh, LEDs for the frame. So what we're gonna do is we're, you're gonna use this 12 volt open unused pad that you'll see on this side of the frame, right here. How do you, what's the trick of desoldering that without having everything else come off? Well, um, be quick. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are doing a four cell, you might as well pretend like you, and you do this before you solder the other ones on. Okay. Right here, we're gonna solder. And I'm just gonna apply heat real quick and so, pull it off. So you, as you're applying heat, you're, you're pulling. Yeah, you don't you tug it, just kind of keep light pressure on it and then it'll come off. Now you see that one actually popped off, so we're actually gonna have to redo the VBAT wire on this one. Since we desolder the black, we're gonna re-solder it on. All right, so we got the black and red wire 
put back in place. Now guys, remember, you do not want any solder bridging between the positive and negative. Otherwise, bad things will happen. The magic smoke will come out and you will be replacing a lot of stuff. And this is the back of the quad. This is the front of the quad. I keep turning around, sorry about that. This is our VTX line right here. This is going to the video transmitter. So we got these two things here and I'm just gonna put some flux on the wire and I'm gonna tin them. And then we're gonna put a little flux. Again, we're using solder paste flux. Um, this is not acid based flux. So put a little flux on the pins here or the pads so we're gonna we're gonna solder put a little solder and tin the negative and positive 12 volt pads here okay these are not silicone wires guys so be careful applying too much heat to them because the longer they the hotter they get the jack this uh the jacket will start pulling back so what we're gonna do is get this here and there and then we're gonna do the positive as well Now, one thing I do want to stress here, because we do have a carbon fiber plate sitting on the side of the board, make sure your wires do not come past the edge of this flight controller, because there's a plate right up against this. If that was shorting up against this plate, you could you could burn stuff up. Um, it may be a small short, it may be a large short, but you can damage things. So make sure your solder pads do not go past the flight controller. If you and that is gonna give us 12 volts regulated to here. So is that it finally? Well, that's everything you needed there. Now Just yeah, this is reassemble. Yeah, we have to reassemble. Now, one thing I do wanna point out, and I'm pretty sure all the wizards now, there are some older ones I have come across. This little solder pad right here, here, even though it's labeled VTX, this is actually running out to the camera on the uh, Eoshin wizard. Um, you'll see there's a VCC and a 12 volt right here. These are a little uh, solder pads you can bridge. And what that does is it controls, uh, it switches be between battery voltage and 12 volt regulate it. Um, what you'll find here is from the factory, they actually put it on the 12 volt pad. The stock camera will run, I believe five to 17 volts or five to 12 volts, something like that. Um, so make sure if you are running four cell, that you do have it on the 12 volt pad, not the VCC. I think the stock camera may burn out on four cell directly wired. So when you have it apart, just double check. 99% of these guys are gonna be on the 12 volt pad bridged, not the VCC. So they should look like what you see here. The VCC is not soldered and the two 12 volt ones are bridged together. And that's going to the camera. So that's there. Off in my soldering here. I've been doing this a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just plug it in since I forgot right. mine. Drum roll, please. So we're going to plug this in. You can hear the buzzer going. Lights are on. Everything's there. VTX, again, is not plugged in. I did not plug in the VTX because I do not have an antenna installed. All right, smarty party. So I'm going to unplug so this. I guess we have no smoke. No smoke. No. We're good. I part gonna... of me is cheering for you. Part of me is sad. <laughs> oh, that's... All right, so... Hopefully don't so now you put the antenna on, right? Antenna's on. Now what 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 would this tell us? Because if we know the well, plugs are working, all the solder is working. there's an LED on the... Yep, there we go. So now, okay. just again, before we put everything together, I got an antenna on, I got everything wired up, and I got the LED showing there is power on the VTX, the camera's on and everything. Uh, this is just a great time to test everything, make sure you did it right before you fully assemble it. Right, so there you have it. Will has successfully soldered or desoldered or reset up the reconfigured the wizard to run uh, a VBAT sensor, a buzzer, and also in this case we've set it up for four cell operation on this particular wizard. Yes. So hopefully you guys enjoyed something. Uh, comment below what you think about this, and I pretty much think we kind of videoed out this wizard here. I think this wizard has been configured out. We've done the VTX, we've done the camera, we did the Forza, we did the VBAT buzzer, we've done uh, pretty much everything. Stick commands, so I think this one is done. Not unless you guys have any ideas about what you want to see upgraded. Yeah, if you got, got another idea that, you know, a lot of people are asking that we're not thinking of off the top of our head, yeah. um, let us know and we'll see if we can do it. All right, thanks for watching, comment below, and be sure to give us a like and subscribe because who knows what video is next on the wizard or the wizard S.